The old method that most people use to create rope involved physically modeling some rope threads. Um, and although it creates some semi-nice results, we've got some newer features in Blender, so we can actually create rope that looks better in less time, um, much easier. So uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create rope using a Bezier curve, a displacement map from Polygon, and the new micro displacements feature. Um, which will basically result in a rope which is easily controllable and adaptively changes its detail depending on how close the mesh is in relation to the camera. So hopefully that sounds pretty cool. Without further ado, go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender so we can get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be creating is a small segment of the rope. So I'm just gonna delete everything and I'm gonna replace it with a circle. Okay, now this circle is going to make up the, you know, the diameter of the actual circle. So because we're going to be adding a subsurf modifier later on, we want to start with something which is very low poly. So by default, it gives you this 32 vertice thing. So make sure that after you've just added in your circle, you hit T and you'll see over here vertices, change it from 32 to 8. All right, now that I've got that, I am gonna to go to front view and rotate it by 90 degrees, like so. And now I wanna create one segment of the rope um, going outward. So in edit mode, I'm gonna extrude, then hit X so that it's snapped to the X axis. And then holding down control, you can see that when you hold down control, that it snaps it to these sort of grid segments in the background there. And you can see that there's these, these thick lines and then these faint lines. So what I wanna do is I want to uh, extrude it out till it hits line three. Okay, so one, two, three. Um, and if you can't see it, by the way, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see that the numbers appear there. So the one that we're looking for actually is three. So once you've got that, click. And if you've got this horrible weird shade, uh, shading, which you probably will, go ahead and select everything and then hit Control N. Sort of a confusing shortcut, I guess, because in most other applications, that would be the new thing. Hey, look, it actually is. Huh, I <laughs> just noticed that. It still is in Blender, but if you're in edit mode and you select everything, it's there. What about here? Yeah, okay, that's 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 really dumb. <laughs> in object mode, it's it actually is a new, new scene, but in edit mode, it's a very common function, recalculate normals. Dangerous. All right, so the reason that I snapped that to line three here is that what I wanna do now is create square faces because when you're using displacements, as you'll probably know if you've ever seen any of my other tutorials where I use displacements, you don't wanna have a rectangular face. So what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm gonna hit Control R, and then I'm gonna scroll up once so that I get two lines. Then if I click, and then it'll be sliding along, just right click, and it will now snap to its uh, default position, which as you can see is directly where those other two lines are, which means that we now have square faces. Whew, very long roundabout way to just create a cylinder, but you know, we're getting there. All right, so now that I've done that, I want to create more of the ropes. We've got one segment, so let's add in an array modifier right here. And I want it to obviously go out to the right there, which is the X axis, which by default, it is actually set up. Like that's the X value at the top there. The reason that it's putting it underneath right now um, is that we rotated our circle. So if you just hit control A and then apply the rotation, it will now be going in the correct direction. All right, so if we just increase that to 10, I don't know why 10, but that's what we'll go with just for now. Um, yeah, now let's do some texturing. So I'm gonna split my view here, load up the node editor right here, add a new material. Um, you could even give it a name if you want to. Roop, rope, there we go. Um, cool, so I'm gonna add in an image texture right here, and I'm gonna connect this to the diffuse input right here. So you can use any image texture you want for this. Um, the one that we're gonna be using is from Polygon right here, polygon.com. So you go to polygon.com and just type in rope and you'll see it show up there. I could have just left it there. You can see that this is uh, the second time that I've done this tutorial. So I already had it up. But anyways, this is the one right here. Now, the reason that, the, the reason, <laughs> the reason that we're using this from polygon.com is that it's got this all important displacement map, um, which we created digitally. 
So it's not like one of those methods where it was a photo which was converted to a displacement, in which case it's all guesswork. Basically, these lines, these, these white values and these black values will create a perfectly um, threaded looking piece of rope. So that's why we're using this one here. Um, you can download it for free with a trial account anyway. So, all right, once you've downloaded it, go ahead and click on open and wherever it is that you've unzipped it to right here. You don't need any more than 2K, by the way. Like, I think it's, yeah, it's available in four sizes, but honestly, yeah, you, unless the camera's right in close to the rope, you're not gonna need anything more than one or 2K. Anyway, I'm using this one, which is the color input. That's our first one, okay? So go and load that in, and you can see how it's connected. It's just going to the diffuse. So if you hit Shift Z here, um, and then let's just give our rope uh, some, uh, sorry, the color to the world so that you can actually see it. Um, you can see that we can't see our texture on the cylinder at all. And the reason for that, of course, is that we haven't UV unwrapped the rope yet. Now, we are doing UV unwrapping, and you might think, why? Like, it's a simple shape. Shouldn't you be able to, you know, use texture coordinates with generated? And you can, but it gets weird results, especially once you add in the Bezier curve later for the cylinder to follow so that it actually looks like a flexible rope. So to make it look perfect, we are gonna be UV unwrapping it. So I'm gonna split my view here, set this to the UV image editor down there. And what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm just gonna hit control, oh sorry, first of all, select one edge like this, the one along the bottom there doesn't matter which one you actually select, but I like to select the one which is gonna be on the opposite side of wherever the camera is. Uh, and then we're gonna hit mark seam so that it's just adding a cut right along there. So now if I select everything, hit U, unwrap, it's now unwrapped it. Okay, now although this is a tileable texture, um, it doesn't look like it's tiling properly, and that's because we're using the array modifier. So it's basically treating this segment so that once it hits the end there, it's repeating this segment here. So basically the way that we would fix this would be to, you could scale this up like that so that it fits it properly, and there you can see it would actually line up. But then you would have another problem here, which is that these uh, threads here, it looks like there's too many. Like ideally you wanna have what looks like three you know, like if this is a piece of rope and you're looking at it front on, like you've got three pieces like that. But in our case right now, it looks like we've got six, right? It's like way too, <laughs> it's a horrible thing to stick in front of the camera, but you, you get the point. There's too many threads uh, interwoven in it. So I did this deliberately because I want to show you um, how to fix this part. Um, so we're going to fix both of those things right now. Um, now the first one is to correct that thing so that it had like instead of it looking like six, that there's actually three, I'm gonna extend this out so that it uses the full part of the um, of the UV uh, grid there. So if I just go into side view right here and extrude, and then just uh, along the X axis and hold down control until it hits another three lines away from that point there. So you can see those faint lines in the background there. So you can see that I've extended it to three beyond that. Now, if I hit Control R, and again, just like before, add in two more loop cuts, like so. Now we have effectively doubled the length of it, which you might think, why does that matter? It will once we do the texturing in a second. So if we select everything, then hit U and unwrap, you would see that you get this. Um, and that's because our seam along the bottom there, it ended. So make sure that you uh, add seam for the rest of it. Do that again, and there we go. So now if we have a look at it, you'll see that the tiling problem is fixed and it looks as though we've only got one, two, three, there you go. We've got three threads instead of there being six. So that's how you create sort of the correct scale for the texture for the rope. All right. Um, oh, one problem as well is that you may notice that these threads here are going lengthways around the rope, which isn't correct. Um, if you look at reference photos of Actually, I don't have any here, but let's just say this was my reference photo. Um, real rope goes in the direction of the rope, like the, the threads, sorry, the tiny little microscopic threads at the bottom there. Um, but so currently it's going the wrong way. So just make sure that uh, you rotate it 90 degrees if that's the case, so that it looks like that. All right, cool. Now, 
in order to get it so that it doesn't have this tiling issue, basically the ends have to line up um, perfectly with your UV grid. So what I'm doing is I'm just positioning it as best I can so that the end is, you know, where it needs to be. Uh, let me just check. Oh, actually, okay. It's better to actually line it up, first of all, with the bottom point so that the cursor is right where it needs to be, like that. And then if you hit Shift S and then select Selected to Pixels, it's a very slight thing, but it'll just move it to the nearest pixel, um, which is handy. So it'll sort of snap it to that. And then once I've got it, uh, so it's, it's lined up everywhere but the top there, I'm just selecting the 2D cursor as the, um, what do you call it, the pivot point, because there is a cursor in the actual UV image editor there. And now if I hit S and then Y, when I scale that up, I can get it really close to the top there and then just hit shift S selected to pixels. And there we go. So now we've got a perfectly tiled rope, which is using the array modifier, which is fantastic. Good. Um, now let's do the, the curvy bit, right? Let's make it actually look like rope so that it bends around. So I'm going to add in right here. Um, I'm going to add in a curve. So shift A curve Bezier. This is it right here. So I'm not gonna bother fiddling with the shape of this just yet. Right now, all I want is for this rope to actually adhere to the shape of this curve there. So with your cylinder selected, add in a curve deform modifier, this one right here. <clears throat> and then underneath object, you wanna select the name of that curve, or you can click the little eyedropper there and then just click the curve on the on the uh, in the 3D viewport there. Now, once I've done that, you can see that it's now it adhering to the curve. You can't really see it because it's way bigger than that. So if I scale down my cylinder, just the cylinder, not the actual curve, the Bezier curve underneath it, you can see that I can get it down to the right sort of size. Okay, so I'm just sort of, for no, I mean, this is arbitrary really, but I'm just making it so that it's like two grid floors wide. That's sort of the size of mine. All right, that's pretty good. And... Whenever you scale something, by the way, like what I just did then, your scaling measurements here will be totally messed up, which can cause problems later on when you get to displacements or other things. So just get into a habit of hitting Control A and then applying the scale after you have done that. And if, by the way, you ever see that your rope appears to be sort of off, like maybe it sort of looks like, uh, like this or something, um, that's because your cylinder origin point is at a different origin point to your curve. So both the curve and the actual object that's being deformed to it has to have the exact same origin point. So if you ever have this happen, just select one, hit shift S, and then make it go to the selection to cursor, which in this case is exactly where my curve is, like that. And then whenever you move them in the future, just make sure you move them both together and that's problem solved. All right. Cool, so now let's do some displacement because you might have noticed looking at this that, you know, doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really look like uh, a rope, like far enough away, yeah, the zigzaggy line sort of confuses your brain into thinking it's a rope, but there's no, there's no bump to it. There's no physical, you know, the threads, which is really important um, for it to look like a rope. So, um, yeah, we're gonna do it by using a new feature of Blender called Micro Displacements. If you haven't watched my old tutorial on it, that's fine. Um, you could check it out in the YouTube description if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna do it right now. So the old method for using displacements was to actually use a modifier over here, but the new method actually allows you to connect it directly in the materials, which is fantastic, because you don't have to bother setting up all this stuff. It's just done right here. So what we're gonna do is hit Shift A and add in a new image texture node right here. Click open and then go back to wherever it is that you've saved your, your rope textures. And you can see that we've got two displacement textures here which look identical and that's because they are identical, but one of them is a TIFF file, a 16-bit TIFF file. Um, and that's just because when you're using displacements, sometimes it can actually uh, make a stepping effect with 8-bit files because it's like the color, there's not enough light color information. Anyway, so you've got 16 bits, which if you use it, you'll avoid that problem. So that's the one you should always use. Anyway, click open. 
And now we are going to connect this into the displacement input of our material output node. Um, now, if you've ever used this input in uh, previous versions of Blender, you'll know that when you do that, all it's really doing is adding like a fake bump, like a grayscale fake bump across the surface, which is why we can't see any difference right now. What we want to do is use a new feature of Blender, which is actually going to make that physically change the geometry of the rope. So the way that you do that is because it's a new feature in 2.78 or whatever, um, first of all, you have to make sure that your feature set is set to experimental. Um, and when you do that, when you go to the material settings down here, you'll see something that says displacement. Um, if, you use, if you're watching this at the next release, I think you'll just be able to do it when it's set to supported, but you, you, you should be able to see it there. But anyways, right now I have to set it to experimental. Okay, and now that I've done that, change it from the displacement bump, which is default, to true. And when you do that, you might not see a change, but if you double tap tab, you can see that it has a double tapping tab, by the way, just goes into edit mode and out of edit mode really quickly. And that refreshes the mesh. Um, and you'll see that it's now physically changing the shape of the rope. Doesn't look very good, of course, <laughs> because we've got a very choppy, low res um, looking rope. So we can fix that very quickly just by adding in a subsurf modifier at the bottom there. Okay. Um, like so. And now you can see it looks like one of those um, potato swizzler things on a stick that you can get at fairs. Um, it looks like one of those, but you'll see that I just want you to notice how it, it is looking smoother. Okay. So it doesn't look great, but it's getting there, right? Um, once you've added in the subsurf modifier, it, it's giving it more geometry to work with. There is another feature which you'll see in the subsurf modifier panel. Down here, there's, there'll, there'll be a feature that says adaptive. Um, and you'll only see that, by the way, if you're in experimental mode or a future Blender release. But when you check adaptive, you might not notice that much has changed. But what it's going to do is it's going to subdivide the mesh. Instead of it subdividing, like the old method for subdividing, was it just apply the blanket amount of detail to the entire mesh. So that uh, basically down here would be subdivided as much as out there, even though what's out there is far less important than what's at the front there uh, because you won't notice the detail at the back. So by using adaptive, it's looking at where the camera is and it's uh, adaptively, <laughs> go figure, subdividing the mesh depending on where the camera is. So it's very subtle, but you'll see down here there's more detail than what you can possibly notice at the back there. It'll be seamless in the final render though, you won't notice anything, but you'll save a bunch of, of RAM. Um, and that, that feature, by the way, this adaptive with this micro displacements here, that is how you're going to be able to create the rope using this method. Like this method wouldn't have been good before these features were added because you would just create a, a rope that's way too high poly, but this saves you a lot of time. Now, one other thing to remember, uh, whenever you're using any image texture in the node editor over here, unless the one, unless it's one that is directly contributing to the color of the material, um, everything else needs to be set to non-color data. So um, you can see that when I did that, when I set this to non-color data, this now looks different. So it's now treating it like it's a grayscale image, which it is, you'll remember. Um, if you had a look at it, it is a grayscale image. So it's, it's now able to read those values better. <laughs> That's my way of understanding it, but it always looks way better whenever you set it to non-color data. Okay, cool. Now let's change it so that it doesn't look like a potato swizzle stick thing. I don't know the actual name of that thing. They started selling them in Korea. I think, was it Korea? They didn't, no, it couldn't have been Korea that invented them. But yeah, they're really, they're really popular in Korea and probably most countries. Anyway, um, yeah, to change it from looking like that, I'm going to add in a converter math node. So if we drag this and drop this between those two points there and then set this to multiply, multiply, this is a quick, like this is a really easy one. Whenever you've got something and you want to dial back its value, if you just add in this, set it to multiply, this value here essentially becomes the strength of this value, if this makes sense. So if you double tap tab, you'll see that now we're using it at 50% strength displacement than what it was before. So if I dial this back even further, and by the way, you won't see it unless you refresh the mesh by hitting double tap tab. 
uh, you can see that we now able to make this finally start to look like a real rope, which is really cool. Um, and there you go. Really cool. Um, all right, let's very quickly just create a very basic scene. I'm just going to add in a plane and yeah, I'll add in a monkey. Why not? And I'm going to make my rope coil around the monkey. Just because I know some people will ask, you know, if I just have this Bezier curve like this, like that doesn't look like rope. So I want to actually make it, you know, do somewhat of a practical example. So essentially to make this look like rope, it's all in the Bezier curve, this curve right here. So it's just a matter of having a look at reference photos of rope and seeing how rope reacts when it's being coiled up, when it's being pulled. Um, I, I had a look at a bunch of different reference photos of, um, uh, what's it called? Rope on a bollard, you know, like next to a, like on a, on a jetty or like where, where boats are tied up. There's that little thing. Oh, this is looking terrible right now. Um, but there's that, that thing where they tie the rope to, to keep the boats from, from going away or whatever. Um, but yeah, I looked at a bunch of reference photo and I just copied sort of how the rope looked. Um, okay, like this, and I'll make it go around the back. Now this looks really terrible right now. And you might notice as well that the curve is now longer than the rope. So when that happens, you just increase the array modifier like so. Okay. All right. So let me just position that there so that it starts to look a little bit. It, I mean, working, I mean, working in 3D is always going to be more awkward than, you know, if you're used to working with curves in Photoshop or whatever, because you're going from a 2D application to a 3D application. So it takes the font of curves from a 2D and then adds another dimension to it. So it is always a little bit fiddly, just moving around, trying to get these curves to line up the way you want them to. But that's really, that's how, that's how you, how you do it. So don't, don't worry if it feels awkward and you don't know if you're doing it right. Yeah, it's just a matter of just trying to make it work as best you can like that. Okay, cool. And just so that there's some actual nice looking light, I'm going to change it from the default white background or the white background that I set it as before. And I'll just add a little lamp here like that. All right. And there we go. So now we've got a rope going around the uh, Suzanne head. All right. So a couple of things I want to change. Um, okay. So for starters, I mean, I probably want there to be uh I want there to be some more to this rope. So I'm just taking that front point and I'll just move that around like there. All right. And then this increase the array to reflect that. Okay. There we go. But the other thing I want to change is I want there to be a little bit more detail to the rope because you'll notice that, you know, from far away, it looks really cool. Like you've got, it's actually rope, which is deforming to the shape that rope should. But when you zoom in, you haven't got that detail there. Like these threads, these little sub threads of the main threads, um, they look a little bit like a photo. So we want there to be some actual bump to like some fake bump to our real bump. Um, and it just so turns out there is that feature. So underneath displacement, uh, you remember that by, by default, it was set to bump. And when it's set to bump, you can see it's doing that fake bump, which is that high detail um, fake bump on top. But if you set it to both, it's doing both, obviously. So it is, um, actually, did I have it on both before? Maybe I already did. Anyway, I think my camera's really close, so it is struggling to catch up. Hopefully the computer doesn't crash. That's the one, one thing you have to be careful of when you're working with uh, adaptive subsurface is like if the camera is super close to the mesh, um, it can sometimes like subdivide it a lot, um, which I think it has done in this case. Let me see. Oh, copying BVH. Wow, it's taking forever. Okay, there we go. Woo, look at that. Okay, so now we've got both, okay? So it was set to bump before, now it's set, then it was true, and now it's set to both, um, and there you go. So that looks good, so that's great. Now there is one other thing as well you might wanna do, um, and that is to give some gloss, like a little tiny little bit of shine to the rope, because, <laughs> I was watching some gum grape <laughs> game grumps before this, and I was just typing it in there. Um, but if, if you look at real photos of rope, like this one here, 
you can see there's a very, very, like it doesn't look like it, it's mostly diffuse, but there's a very tiny amount of shine just on the edge there. And the other thing that you'll notice with fabric is that it sometimes has like a Fresnel effect, like a sort of fuzzy, uh, velvety sort of edge, right? So again, very, actually you can probably see it better in this photo. Just on the edges there, it just looks a little bit lighter than it does elsewhere, just a very subtle amount. So we can do both of those very easily. So I'm gonna add in a mix shader right here and I'll add in a glossy shader right underneath it. All right, and not at this value unless you wanted to make it look like wet rope, but I'm gonna go really, really low, like 0 0.01. Because remember, like in our photo, you can barely notice it, like right here just barely notice a, a subtle amount of gloss there. Like this roughness is probably okay, so I'll use that. And then for that that very fuzzy edge, I'm gonna add in a Fresnel effect, and I'm just gonna make it impact the color of our rope here. So if I add in a mix RGB node like that, and then a Fresnel node like this, drag that into the top input there to the factor input, and then when I set this to screen, this now becomes, this value here, becomes the strength of that fuzziness effect. So if I just, actually, let's just select that, hit M, that'll now mute the uh, the gloss shader. So it's just using the diffuse, uh, right? And I'll just dial that back. So basically, however, oh no, oh no, no, I crashed. Well, that's what happens when you use an experimental feature. <laughs> All right, geez, that, I had to rebuild the entire scene um, because I forgot to save. The more you learn, right? Um, anyways, I, I wanted to, the reason I remade the whole thing anyway is because there's one other step that I wanted to tell you um, and that's that you can see these little gaps here in the rope. That's because the array system, there's, you know, putting them end to end. Um, so you need to check merge and then it will merge the vertices when they're close enough and then you don't get that, um, that little sectioning happened there, which is good. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. We got a little bit of gloss, tiny amount of gloss, little bit of fur for the Fresnel. Uh, that was the other thing I was explaining. Like if you want to control how much Fresnel actually appears on it, this value here essentially becomes that Fresnel. I didn't even, I haven't saved this actually, have I? Oh yeah, I have saved it. Okay, good. <laughs> I just did the same thing that crashed it before. Um, but anyway, yeah. Because once this is set to screen, it's now only going to take screen. Uh, it's only going to take the white values. So turning that down essentially becomes the opacity of that fluffy furriness uh, sort of effect there. Um, that's pretty much it. So essentially that's how you make rope. Um, and the good thing about this method is, is that because it's using this adaptive subdivision, you can have the camera really far away you know, and you'll get a very low res looking mesh. And you can see when I zoom in there that it's using this choppy sort of low res mesh. It doesn't even literally look that low res. But then also when the camera gets in really close, um, it's now going to smooth it out. So no matter where you are in the scene, you're gonna get an optimized mesh and it's gonna look, um, it's gonna look really sweet. So for my final uh, render, I did a couple of other things to it. Actually, only one other thing extra. Um, and that was to add some fluffiness, like some individual strands to the rope, uh, which you can do very easily by adding in a particle system here. Set this to hair, um, check advanced, and then make use modifier stack so that it actually uses this whole modifier stack. And yeah, basically dial this down to a hair length, which is acceptable you know, sort of around about that. I think I went with 10,000. Obviously it depends on how long your rope is. How long's a piece of string? Oh, can't believe I said that. That just popped into my head. Um, then uh, underneath here, where is it? Oh, where's the render? Oh, render, right here. Change it so it's got a random amount and then a little bit of brownian so that it makes them sort of squiggly looking hairs instead of perfectly straight hairs. And then you set the scaling value right there. You set that down to something that makes sense. So 0 0.02 perhaps, or 0 0.01 even. Um, but yeah, that's basically, there is one downside though to using these hairs is that by having particle hairs, it's moved it to the bottom of the modifier stack and the adaptive subdiv only works if it is the last thing in the stack. 
And then when you move it above that, and I'm pretty sure this is a bug in 2.78, but it won't actually display it. Um, so yeah, if I want the adaptive subdiv and I want particles, I basically had to make them a separate curve here, which was only the, um, only the hair there. And then I basically deleted the hair from the one underneath it like so, and then I got both at the same time, uh, which I don't have. Why does that happen? Oh, probably because I've got all that again. So yeah, fix that. And now I've got both. So that was a little workaround, but yeah, that's basically the hair. So um, that's the rope, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, help other people find it. And to see more tutorials like this one, go ahead and click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.